Okay, well, good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're watching this at. So, um, obviously, you see Chapter 4 here, Public Relations um, and Community Relations. So, this has to do with a contrast. So, what we're going to be talking about here is, like, sort of a, uh, what is it that we're sort of, as police professionals, what are we sort of uh, at odds at with the community? And uh, basically, how can we come about with trying to make amends with the community of some of the things that we're <clears throat> uh, having problems with? So understand this is that, you know, we talked about a little bit about last chapter about some of the Pelian principles. And we talked about uh, concepts that had to do with uh, constitutional policing. And so with that right here, I am going to now put into some things of where things have went wrong. And um, you're going to have three uh, assignments that are going to be with those. And uh, one of them to make sure while you're in here is that you're going to be listening and, and time stamping if, uh, at least one of the three that's in here. So uh, I know that you're also uh, watching the PowerPoint. So let's get started. Okay, so you have a little bit of history here. Um, as you can see, some of the lines within the PowerPoint, there's been a little bit of agreement uh, on what police community relations are. I want you to understand there's a difference between police public relations rather than police community relations. So uh, there's considerable confusion that exists as to still today on what community relations should accomplish and how they should do so. It is, however, accepted that the, this whole concept of a separate operational concept originated uh, with the St. Louis Police Department in 1957. Um, I bring this uh, light bulb in front of you as an idea of like how all parts of the rainbow, all colors of the rainbow need to come together in order to create the rainbow. So it's the same concept here. All colors of the community, all parts of the community, all religions of the community, all need to come together to come up with the ideas on how it is that um, law enforcement is going to act within their community. Uh, so progression. So it was uh, widely felt that such specialized responsibilities could help improve community communications between increasingly activist minority groups and the police. Uh, the primary goal of such units was to usually serve to go as go-betweens, interpreting the attitudes, desires, and intentions of minority groups and police agencies. Now I put uh, some of those uh, pictures up on the side. Um, hopefully that you can see them halfway decent, but essentially what it is is we're showing us nowadays uh, partnering with um, uh, more or less minority groups on, um, and those could be anywhere, again, we just said, it could be uh, of someone of a certain skin color, it could be something of a special interest group, it could be something of an LGBTQA plus, um, uh, acronym. It could be, uh, um, you know, one of the ones in Kalamazoo had to do with uh, mothers of homicide victims. So um, there, there could be whatever it is, but whatever that is, um, that's the look that they have an interest of what's going on in the community. And we sort of talked about this earlier last week about how we as the police continue, continuously, or we as the FBI or whatever always think that we know what's best for the public. Well, unless you have the public sitting at your table, you're not gonna know. You can look through all kinds of data, but you are definitely not going to know uh, the outcome of what it is that your community wants, what your community wants. And that's sense, right? Community relations. So here comes this, uh, this philosophy. So the community policing philosophy it broadens the scope of police community interactions from a narrow focus devoted exclusively to crime to an examination of community concerns such as the fear of crime, disorder of all types, neighborhood decay, and crime prevention. And so one of the, how can you say this, uh, one of the main 
focus points of community policing. And I don't know if my arrow shows up in here or not, but this area right here that says the fear of crime, literally that is what is the judgmental point on if a police department is doing their job what's concerned by the public. So if the public is in fear of crime, that they are gonna be a victim or crime is gonna occur, they will label the police department as not doing their job. Understand that they can show all the statistics that they want to, but at the same time, they can continuously, if, I'm saying statistics if they want to, to show that crime has decreased, but if they don't feel that they are safe, you're gonna be able to see that there's going to be, um, that they're gonna feel like the police aren't doing their job. And, um, and again, remember, I always will be neutral in my political views, but you did see this last year um, with certain newsreels of where they're making the, making it look like there is complete mutiny that's going on out there with the burning of the buildings and stuff of that nature, retaliation against the police. Um, and then also you have the other side of, of some newsreels showing that the police are doing, that's all they're doing is beating folks or, you know, sure, shooting and hurting folks. So, um, again, creating that fear, and it's not only a fear of crime, but also the fear of the police, right? I and mean, let's just talk about the elephant in the room. So, you know, taking that in consideration and knowing what those are all about, um, that is will then funnel into the disorder of all types of crime, the neighborhood decay and crime prevention, which if I think that you folks, some of you are taking me, yes, you are for juvenile delinquency right now, where we're gonna get into those type of uh, issues as well too. Okay, so here we are with, uh, uh, the, obviously we're gonna sort of push, what is the difference between community and public relations? Uh, obviously, even though there's a difference, they definitely are related. And um, you can see here, if you read down through some of the slides, I just want to sort of talk about one specific part on this slide. <coughs> Excuse me, and that's that they're definitely, the difference has to be though understood, not only with the police department, but also with the public on what the difference is between the two and some of the similarities. So looking at this, when we talk about the different characteristics, we want to talk about what is the purpose of the activity, the process involved in the activity, and the extent of the citizen involvement. And those three, where's my fingers? Those three uh, uh, focuses of the characteristics is important because if I was to tell you, um, let's say that you were going to put out information to the public about uh, break-ins that were occurring at the local restaurant, let's say at the McDonald's that's inside your town. Cars are getting broken out to in the parking lot or at your, at your school in the parking lot. Are you putting that information out or are you trying to develop a plan on how to curb it? So think about the two there. So if I'm just trying to push that information out where I ended up sending them out to all the parents or on like a reverse 911 or the emergency system that has with the school or something of that nature or the McDonald's employees, I'm just giving that, that them information. Okay, I'm just giving those information. But if I wanna try to like take care of the problem, right? I want to be able to get information to take care of that problem. And so I'm going to be working with, working with those folks that are involved in it to try to come to a resolution to take care of that problem. So those are the two differences between community relations and public relations. If I'm just giving information out, I'm giving relation to the public, public relations. If I want to involve the community, right? I want to work on relations with the community. I'm going to act in a partnership with them. So that's the difference. 
Okay, we're going to continue on. Uh, we're going to talk about public relations here. And we're going to also continue on our example of that with cars getting broken into in the school parking lot. So um, one common purpose of public relations activities is to, to develop and maintain a good environment in which to operate. So this involves influence attitudes in three areas of the environment. The public, pol politicians, which could still be, um, that when you say politicians, it could be not necessarily on a presidential area, but it could be on a city council area or even on a school board. And then the staff that's involved in it. Uh, in order to achieve this purpose, the police must minimize obstacles and encourage support. The obstacles result from conscious opposition to what the police have done, are doing, or plan to do. So let's let's take that for instance. Let's say that my um, public relations that I'm going to give to the school and or the parents is to be able to push out an informational to let the kids know and the staff know, that means the school staff know, that it will help in curbing the cars getting broken into if you lock your doors. So they are going to push that out information and try to curb that from actually happening. So understand is that that's something very simple. It's something as simple as oh, Smokey the Bear type situation where you put, you know, if, if I say Smokey the Bear and you put a picture of Smokey Bear up, it means don't have campfires out in the forest or it means put out all fires. Those are things that you are going to relate with with that. So you may see something that may come along with this where you might have a uh, something there that uh, will show like a person uh, locking their car door. Something of that nature. So that's just a straight public reaction. That's us just shooting it out to you. Next slide. So there's at least five functions that are essentially uh, public relations and trust, but which complement some community relations efforts. So um, this is going to be where you're going to want to uh, note the timestamp, uh, which is about 12:30 to 13 minutes or so by the time I get done with it, so that you can put that in the assignment. And that's to make sure that you're watching the videos as well too. So uh, again, there's five functions. Um, knowing that uh, that these five functions that inform the public about crucial issues, develop community support, supplement agency operations and programs, presenting an accurate picture of the agency and enhancing the agency's division uh, image. Public relations activities can and should be part of a properly applied community relations program, but they can't substitute for it. So um, what you're going to see here is uh, where it says enhancing the agency's image. That's actually going to take part of one of our assignments. And I'm going to make sure that you are uh, looking at your book. So it's going to be at page 72 to 73. And some of your answers should come in from that um, to help you out with the agency's image. And a lot of it, though, is going to be a lot of reflection on what you think that the um, this specific agency is doing, and this is going to be Kalamazoo Department of Public Safety. Um, and I've used an example that they did to help enhance their agency's image, but at the same time, it is definitely a public relations and a trust, uh, make sure you use that word in your answer, a trust uh, building, uh, I'm sorry, a trust build, building uh, mm -hmm publication that they're pushing out. Okay, sorry about the stumble on words there. Uh, yeah, so information flows uh, in public relations. So remember I said earlier that the information flows outward in public relations uh, and it goes from the agency to the actual public. So the assignment and those specific ones uh, that makes the decision is generally made in direct relationship to the importance given to the specific program by a top administration. Uh, I put these dot, dot, dots here and I'll go back and explain a little bit more. But the pure public relations approach alienates concerned citizens by convincing them that the department is merely interested in image building, not dealing with problems or an ineffective communication with the community. 
So again, here is something else that you can talk about in your assignment and um, that I was giving you on, on Kalamazoo Public Safety and something that they did that was really good. But at the same time, um, I want you to ask yourself is that did anybody ask them to actually do that? Um, and so um, understand that, that they may feel that that is great for them to go and do that, but is that what the community actually wanted out of them to have that? So um, just sort of thought, think about that a little bit as we, as we get into those uh, conversations within your assignment. Um, and then we're gonna have some reflection on what it is that you actually feel as if you were a citizen within the city of Kalamazoo. Is, does that mean something to you? Um, so again, I'm not gonna uh, spoil the beans here right now, but at the same time, I want you to sort of just think about that concept as we get into it. So why do public and community relations, right? Uh, here we have another uh, photo, as I think I pushed out last week, of maybe somebody uh, down on their knees um, uh, uh, praying or maybe holding hands of somebody uh, uh, from the public. So I understand is that a strong held value in our culture is that the informed and educated citizen is the best participant in a democratic government. If people understand why an agency performs as it does, they will be supportive of their performance. Promoting a positive image is a logical extension of public information activity. Now, we actually talked about this a little bit in our class last week um, when we talked about the uh, concept of having a, a problem within our uh, community. And uh, we used the example of uh, like drugs at a, a school and all of the members that had to be involved in that. I think you remember we wrote that up on the grease board and all of the members that needed to be involved in that in the event that they could work on this together and it wasn't a police problem, it was a public problem. And uh, so knowing that that's the difference between, I want you to understand is that when you read that right there, is that people understand why an agency performs as it does, they will be supportive of their performance. That's gonna be in fail or in success. But obviously if you have the, the community helping you in making those decisions and helping you with the tools in order to do that, we're going back to those Peel principles again. And um, I think again, I know from my own experience that this is the proper way to take on problems within the community. Uh, so again, still, why do public and community relations? You know, this is done by stressing the stressing, helping and emergency attributes of the police role. Community relations programs can share purpose and sub purposes with the police public relations efforts. Community relations efforts are geared toward integrating community forces and law enforcement agencies and, and partnerships. So again, we go back to that concept is that, do you remember, hopefully you remember that, the people are the police and the police are the people. And so knowing that, like again, if you are, if, if you want the public to actually respect you for who that you are, well, gosh, you have to earn that respect. And understanding that you're only there for eight to 10, eight to 12 hours a day, but they live there. And they're the ones that are paying their taxes. I want you to understand what that means though, is that they're paying their taxes so that you can work with them, not against them, towards building a great community for them to live in. And I hope that resonates with you a little bit on what partnership actually means in community relations. So uh, the philosophy of community relations, uh, again, stresses the, uh, the interrelationships and mutual dependencies of police agencies and citizens. It must depend on the community as a source of their legitimacy. Protecting and serving must be defined in terms of the community's needs and wishes in order for police function to be legitimate. 
The community is in turn dependent on the police to provide services essential to maintaining an atmosphere of stability. We sort of jumped into that a little bit early on the last slide, but at the same time, those things that I said on the last slide actually hold a lot of promise here. And there's a lot of binding words that are here in front of you that actually show you that that is actually the truth. And we're gonna talk about this like real quick here, but must depend upon the community as a source of their legitimacy. We did talk about this and we dabbed our feet into a little bit, but the truth of the matter is, is that like if they don't respect us to do our job within their community and they don't feel that we're there to help them and we're there to hurt them, we won't get anything done. We won't get anything done. So you have to be able to have a relationship with those mutual people that are out there that are being hurt or being having crime against them in order for you to exist. And that's that relationship that they're talking about. That's that community relationship. So we click on to the next slide here in just a minute. Um, so uh, it's got to come with citizen involvement, right? Uh, so we know that. We just can't make the rules up of what we have and decide that what we're going to do is the right thing. And I know I've, and I'm sorry that I'm keep beating this down, but at the same time, although the police have either assumed or have been assigned responsibility for dealing with many of our complex social problems, they alone cannot solve any of them. The police are only able to provide limited special attention to the most crucial problems, usually in a crisis in reactive fashion. So the point is, is here is that like understand is that we are very much reactive rather than proactive. And because, you know, we go with the old term of you call, we haul. And what that basically means is that there's a concept or a theory that some police officers may have that if you call us, we're gonna take somebody to jail. Um, and where you're not really, again, getting to the root of the problems. And again, you can see that up there, it says complex social problems. You will never be able to arrest your way out of a situation or a social problem. It doesn't happen. Um, it's getting to the root of the actual problem. And because we're only in the community for those 8 to 12 hours a day, we need to be able to get with, in the dirt, those folks that live there, whether it's this folks right here that are standing here, whether it's um, a Black Lives type Matter type situation, whatever it is, we need to be able to get with them and understand what it is that we are not matching for them or how it is that we can come come and help them with maybe even with services. Um, we are not, a, we cannot solve them all of ourselves though. Um, and that's when we start getting into what's called multidisciplinary teams where we might have mental health work with us. Um, you're gonna see one of those in the assignments as well too and how the San Diego Police Department is leveraging technology to really help um, their police department and their citizens work together to answer problems within the community, which I think is just brilliant. So as we continue on, we're talking about the community relations side of it. Um, this is how things are different on the community relations side than on the public relations side. So in the standardization area, so they are difficult to routine and standardize function that they are supposed to perform usually requires flexibility and capacity for rapid change. Again, remember, this is going to be because there's both ways, right? It's a two-way street right there. It's not just a one-way going out. I like how big my hand is right there. Look at that. Whew. All right. So agency-oriented or community-oriented or both, if the function of the police is to protect and serve, then to be community-oriented ultimately serves the needs of the agency, too. So in that aspect, uh, let's get back to the, uh, the concept of the cars being broken into in the, the, the department. 
Um, obviously, in the, I'm sorry, in the uh, school, uh, if in fact that we want to stop that, right? Uh, but so we're there protecting and serving. And then at the same time, how that is also community oriented is because we want to make sure that our people are being, uh, uh, their belongings are actually being protected as well too. So, and information flow, you can see on that, as we talked about just a second ago, this is a two-way, and that's definitely critical to that of community relations. It's two-way, not one-way. So as we, we can, you know, talk about what our point of view is, but we need to be able to hear back from them, uh, the community, on why it is that um, we should be maybe uh, getting the okay to do it at that particular level or um, we're going to want to be able to hear why that is not a good uh, reason on why we do why we would want to handle that in a certain way why we would want to be able to put a plant car out in the uh, school parking lot where some people may feel that that would be entrapment um, in order to do uh, to catch somebody uh, or stealing a bicycle we set a bicycle out and they decide that to try to get somebody to steal it. And, and, and in fact, um, all we're doing is creating an opportunity for somebody to actually come by and steal it so we can charge them. So those are type of things that we have to get buy-in from the actual public in order to, for those things to take place. Uh, the hierarchy level of involvement, uh, as again, usually uh, if activities are expected to pervade the entire organization or involve the only specific they could be at a line level, which means on a lower level, it's not going to be a chief that's actually going to do it to make the decisions about um, uh, setting up a sting or a bicycle out in a parking lot for it to be stolen. Um, they may actually end up having, uh, they're going to be like, it's going to be more of a sergeant situation that is going to take care of that. Uh, but of course, you know, if we're talking about Coleman Police Department, um, the uh, police chief will be involved in it. And we're talking about um, a, a larger police department uh, like Grand Rapids uh, Police Department. Uh, obviously, uh, the chief would not be involved in that type of situation. Uh, so here are some community relations program examples. Um, there's uh, public relations programs. Uh, we know what ride-alongs are. Uh, there's police station tours, safety lectures. Um, Again, some of you haven't been around with McGruff, but uh, it's a police officer come to school and, and, and talk as well too. Police officers come out to community meetings and different citizen recognitions. So those are really good ways of um, uh, just somebody uh, like for a burning house or that has rescued somebody or uh, up a citizen arrest or something of that nature is actually uh, bringing that up as a citizen record. So those are excellent, excellent ways of showing that there's partnerships with the police. And, and now I will say one other thing is though, so some of these things up here as a ride along and police station tours, I mean, I am a huge fan of making sure that those talk to, those things happen, police relation programs, uh, like the, uh, uh, night out programs where the police go out into the neighborhoods and set up their police cars and invite communities to come and see them um, and participate and ask questions those those are just worth every second of their time out there because it does one thing and that's build relationships where, with the folks that you may not get a chance to talk about or talk to here are some of the things that uh, uh, some of the uh, major community relations focus. Uh, so what, what, what do they do is that uh, it controls rumors, right? Um, so if I'm out there and I can ask an officer um, about a certain issue, I mean, they can get right first from me on, on what the police may be doing in a certain issue. Uh, there's community advisory councils and committee. Um, those essentially could be a situation where um, like, uh, like a neighborhood may have their own community neighborhood council where they can go, where it's a public, they act as a buffer where they can go to the actual uh, council and work with them because they, they just don't have the, the uh, binding 
partnership with the police yet. Um, uh, storefront centers, uh, we can essentially uh, have those type of centers, I know specifically in the city of Saginaw and also in Kalamazoo, um, they would essentially occupy storefront centers um, so that people felt at ease instead of going in, going in there, instead of going into like the police department because it was built right into the neighborhoods. Um, again, neighborhood team policing, you're going to see a, a video on the San Diego Police Department, which again, I think is just fabulous, some of the stuff that they're doing um, and how they're leveraging technology. So I won't get into that too much there, but you can go ahead and read that um, when you get to that assignment. Uh, foot patrol programs. Uh, there is without a doubt shown time after time that if you get out on foot, you are going to get to know the people within your neighborhood because you're approachable. If you're in a car, you're not going to have that happen. So um, again, getting out and walking out into the streets and getting to know the people that you patrol and help um, take care of their problems in the neighborhoods. That's again another well second, every second well spent. Um, the physical decentralization of command. Essentially, what that means is that um, having the officers out there on the street help in making the decisions built with the community on how to solve problems um, instead of like having that have to go way up for something to make a decision and then wait for it to come all the way down. Problem-oriented policing, crime prevention programs. I'm gonna hold on and talk about those because we're gonna spend probably about three weeks within those at the end of the chapter and the end of the semester. Um, not this chapter, but at the end of the semester and this, uh, my friends, is truthfully where things are headed, and I love problem-oriented policing. Um, it is the, basically the st strategic moving with the police and the community on how to um, deter crime from happening and get to the root of the program and the root of the problems that are out there. Um, it's just fabulous when it works. I've, I've done them myself. I've been witness to them, and we're going to have a lot of fun in this area to actually find out that there's a science that's behind it. Um, so very good. Uh, crime prevention programs. Uh, you're going to see we're going to talk about this. I, 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 I talked a little bit more about the problem-oriented policing uh, just a second ago, but we're going to talk about crime prevention programs. So some programs are considered very successful and their success is defined in a wide variety. Um, the number of neighborhood crime watch teams form, number of volunteers in the program, you can read the rest of those uh, brochures dis distributed. Understand though, understand. The level of crime prevention will be easier to achieve when working with neighbors that already have a positive view of the police. And we talked about that word legitimacy, right? And so if we can actually work with those communities that have not had a really good reputation with uh, the police has not given them a very good reputation in the past, um, when we can hold hands on things, um, it is just magical that's out there. And um, so those are, those are some things that are, are laying in the way for us in, in the future chapters. Um, and that's just an exciting thing that we're gonna be talking about here soon. Um, uh, I will say something about the crime prevention programs um, that sort of like ties right in with community policing uh, because remember in the beginning I talked about community policing, it uh, uh, bears its fruit best when the community is not in fear of crime and not in fear of crime. So that's a real uh, central point also for the crime prevention programs as well too. Uh, neighborhood Watch is one of those uh, 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 programs, the police ask citizens reporting suspicious activities. You drive in through a neighborhood, and again, if you happen to see that sign that's on the bottom in a neighborhood, um, and that sign looks crisp and clean, you're probably thinking that these people are, you know, up on it, and they're going to be watching as you drive through it. If you drive into a neighborhood and the sign, or they don't have a sign, or even if the sign is sort of crappy, 
and uh, worn and you know the grass isn't cut around it and so forth is if you're a crook you probably think that uh, you know you got a chance in this neighborhood to actually get what it is that you want to um, so those are that again that's really something where the community officer or the police officer that's working to beat in that area can uh, work together with their partnership uh, identifying what those problems may be and uh, specifically uh, knowing that again the public is the police and the police are the public so uh, again you're going to hear me beat on beat my drum for the rest of the semester on that uh, operation identification this is actually something really neat that uh, um, way back when uh, when I was a little guy um, uh, I used to participate with my dad and putting all of uh, his driver's license numbers on all of our uh, expensive belongings that we had which was pretty much firearms at the time um, and uh, so that I always thought that that was sort of cool so that way down the road if um, you know we ever got your TV stolen or whatever it may be an officer might be able to run the uh, not really the serial number but it could always run the driver's license number and uh, because that will always come back and that's not something that uh, uh, people who thieve uh, really think about anymore so uh, police auxiliary programs uh, involve citizens of all ages and a broad range of support activities um, those actually uh, are, are actually really good programs because you may have a specific issue like handicap parking that the police you just do not have time to take care of but they have people who may have a disability or senior citizens that have been given the authority to go out and write uh, handicap parking tickets and so they may uh, head out to the mall during a specific time or schools or wherever it may be and they may find that there are a uh, handicap uh, uh, parking of people who are not and they'll actually write them a ticket and put it on their on their uh, windshield and show up for it and it's uh, it's actually a pretty neat situation um, there's also um, I think I may have mentioned it before but there's also uh, you know the pops program which is pastors on patrol um, so there, there's a lot of things that can come out of police and it's really your imagination I think that's something that we're definitely going to be exploring as we head down uh, into future chapters uh, community crime watch um, I think this is the last slide here uh, uh, public utility companies have been trained and organized as part of the crime watch team they become an excellent police support group um, really because they are one of the few people that may get inside the home and if they get inside the home to do the cable or they're up on a pole um, they have uh, there's been more times than not that they have been really good in tracking human trafficking um, so I want to I want you to understand is that you probably were thinking like drugs and meth houses and all that I mean they because they're out in the public and they're out in all different areas like they really have a good eye and trained on how it is to um, for those folks that are being human trafficked so uh, so crime stoppers if you're not familiar with that um, you know they may put a uh, uh, a, a dramatic uh, reenactment of like a bank getting robbed or something of that nature a couple plates or face on there that they may have and they enlist private citizens in a fight to uh, try to get rid of uh, rid of that person by uh, identifying um, if you want to and anytime I uh, go on a Portage public safety website um, they literally have on there all the time because there's so much retail frauds on there and they can't get them identified so they will shoot that picture on there and I'm telling you within an hour or two these people get identified it's it's crazy how, uh, how quickly people want to turn people in so so anyway so there's my last example here with the relationship building side of it um, so there's a, a case that I had that uh, um, I would not have able to um, solve uh, there was 30 to 40 people that were witnesses to it and it happened in a really troublesome neighborhood and um, we really had to work together on our relationships uh, with my entire uh, 15 years at the time that I was out working in these neighborhoods that I was able to build um, trust with the community um, that people that did not look like me and continue on and 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 come to 
um, get people to come and step forward because it was the right thing to do. Um, I wanted to pull this up, but what I will have you do is go and uh, if you'd like to read this, a 2009 case a few days ago, right? Um, and uh, all you got to do is cut paste two 18-year-olds bound over for trial and being a, a bicyclist. And um, you'll see something, an uh, uh, article that was written. Um, I don't know if uh, my name is in this actual one. It might be. Um, but um, this was something that I would not have been able to solve if the community would not have st uh, stepped up. It actually made it on CNN. So, not a good thing for me. So. And that'll be all. Take care.